All right. Playoff football. 2023 CIF San Diego section is right around the corner. Well, tomorrow, actually, in, in relativity to when this is going to be recorded and uploaded. Very excited. All the players around the county should be licking their chops. And that's not true because a lot of these players are probably shaking in their legs for those teams that aren't confident and that are playing a bigger, better opponent. But at the end of the day, no criticism to them. You know what I mean? They have their chances, but it's probably not going to go their way for these underdog teams because you're going to be playing some higher seeds. So not everyone may be feeling the same way, but those teams at the top of the county, you know who I'm talking about. Open Division, Division One, some Division Two teams that are up there. Those that want to prove that they're the best and that they're worthy, this is their time to shine. This is their time to be able to make the big plays. Everything matters now. This is serious playoff football time, man. Doesn't get any better. I'm going to go ahead and go through all the divisions and I'm going to go through the brackets and I'll kind of predict who I think is going to move up all the way to the championship and I'll make some highlights and kind of specify on some of the information that I know with some of the teams and get a little bit more in depth with the analysis um, for said teams but not every team is going to have that obviously the bigger teams in the open and division one I'll get a little bit more into just because they bring in a lot more talking points than division five Vincent Memorial right so we're going to kind of go over that and I'm going to get my in-depth analysis and eventually choose my winners for each division. Hopefully, I can be able to make some timestamps to be able to highlight when I'm going to be talking about a specific division. But we'll see if I can do that. But I'll just go down the line, starting with open, going to division five, and then kind of highlighting some key points with certain teams. So actually, let's go the opposite. Let's go low to high. We're going to go low to high, and then I'll kind of end it from there because I'm eventually going to talk about the big schools last. So let's go to do that. Okay, Division 5. Okay, we got Vincent Memorial out of Calexico. They're the number one seed. And then we have we have eight seeds, eight teams that are going to be in Division 5. I know there's a Division 5 AA, and then there's a Division 6, but we're not even going to get down there. So best of luck to those teams. No offense, no disrespect. But in Division 5, we have we have some teams here worthy um it's it's this is a in, this is a very very interesting list of teams um for those that have had some history a being old enough and b kind of following the CIF San Diego section over the years and kind of how teams have been going up and down this is so interesting if you told somebody in the past back in 2006 2007 that these teams would be in Division 5, they'd probably look at you crazy. So we got number one seed, Vincent Memorial, facing off against number eight, Valhalla. Number four, Hoover Cardinals, facing off against Monta Vista. Number five, Kearney Comets at six, facing against El Cajon Valley at three. And then Southwest El Centro Eagles versus Sweetwater Red Devils, number two. Crazy. Valhalla's a powerhouse, going to play CIF Division 2 in 2012 hoover cardinals putting out professional athletes year in and year out back in the day going up against a Monta Vista team that's known for the same thing kearney comets used to be such a powerhouse back in the early 2010s southwest el central was just was just competing in division three not too long ago it's crazy anyway we got i believe that the hoover cardinals Led by Sir Autry. That kid's killing it. Hopefully he can transfer to a bigger school to get a little bit more notoriety, but he is killing it. Shout out to him. Rushing, gonna rush for over two thousand yards. Rushing for over two thousand yards is crazy in one season. I believe that he's gonna take them all the way. And they're gonna Well, they're they are in the same bracket as Vincent Memorial. So Vincent Memorial is gonna take care of business against Valhalla. I'm going to choose Hoover over Vincent Memorial, even though Vincent Memorial is really good. I haven't watched much of them, but I know they're a really solid team on the desert. I got Hoover facing off in the final.
against Sweetwater. Hoover and Sweetwater. And then I got Hoover winning Sayef, Division 5. That's what I got. D4. Easiest, easiest path to championship, in my opinion, in the, in the recent years. Mount McGill is number one seed. I'm just going to say it straight up. They're going to win it all. But the interesting part is who's going to be their victim in the final. Mount McGill's one seed. Chula Vista Spartans, two seed. Westview, three seed. Santana Sultans, four seed. So one and four is going to match up in their bracket, and three and two is going to match up in their bracket. So that means that Mount McGill is going to blow past Colexco, Escondido, Crawford, Orange Glen. They're going to beat Santana eventually and advance over to um, the championship. But then on the other side of the bracket, you got Bonita Vista, Coronado, Escondido Charter, Olympian. I believe Westview has a really solid team. They've been playing better teams than all of these teams combined, even Mount McGill, just being in that North County area. Westview's going to go all the way, but they're going to lose a championship game to Mount McGill. Um, if I could give a score, probably 42-20. I got Mount McGill beating Westview. Okay, Division Three. One through four seed, Mission Bay Buccaneers, Fallbrook Warriors, West Hills Wolfpack, and Grossmont Foothillers. Interesting list here. This is interesting in Division Three because I believe all these teams have the most equal opportunity to be able to make a run, which is very interesting. It it gives a lot of it it provides a lot of parity based off of the ability level for all these teams just because everyone's pretty even. I look at a number five Santa Fe Christian. I look at a number 11 Morris. And these teams can compete. I think a Valley Center is out of the question. I think a San Diego Caver is out of the question. Like El Cap can make a run if they wanted to at nine. It's crazy. This is interesting. It's going to be very interesting. Okay, the top bracket one and four Grossmont and Mission Bay. I have Mission Bay playing Santa Fe Christian to go into the championship game. And then I have Mission Bay winning over Santa Fe Christian. Dang, that's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Santa Fe Christian and Mission Bay. I got Mission Bay going winning in that bracket. Wow. Wow. The, the the lower bracket, West Hills and Fallbrook. Sheesh. Fun fact, I am an alumni for the Wolfpack, so this is this hits home for me. This is crazy for me to say. I have West Hills going to CIF out of this bracket. If they can beat Fallbrook, I'm going to choose West Hills over Fallbrook just because I have a little bit of even though I hate my school, my former school, and, and, and their incompetence over the years, they're in this bracket with teams that are their ability level. I'm going to give West Hills the edge and have them play Mission Bay. But in reality, Fallbrook will probably beat West Hills, especially because Fallbrook is a higher seed. Therefore, they're going to play at home. But West Hills will be very motivated to play this game. So I'm going to just say Mission Bay will play West Hills in the CIF championship. And Mission Bay will win 35-17. to 17. Division 2. 1 through 4. Del Norte, number 1 seed. Rancho Bernardo, number 2 seed. La Jolla, number 3. Scripps Ranch, number 4. This is very, very difficult. A lot of these teams are very solid. There's not as much parity here. But there are some underdogs. So Point Loma being number five seed can sneak in and beat Scripps Ranch to be able to get into the semifinals. I believe Del Norte is going to run through everybody. The winner of Steel Canyon, Oceanside, Del Norte will win. But they're going to end up facing off against either Scripps Ranch or Point Loma. I believe that Point Loma could beat Scripps Ranch. So I'm just going to say Del Norte is going to beat Point Loma to go into the championship game. And in the other bracket, I believe a Bishops can upset Rancho Bernardo. I don't see foresee that happening, but I'm saying it's a possibility that they can do that indeed. And I'm going to say Rancho Bernardo is going to end up going to CIF beating La Jolla. 
to get all the way. I believe Rancho Bern- or Del Norte is going to play Rancho Bernardo for that rematch. I believe they went into 17 overtimes during regular season. They're going to play again, and I believe Del Norte is going to win. I believe that Del Norte is better. I thought Rancho Bernardo played very inspired. But I don't think that'll happen this time around. Del Norte is a really good team. Unless they're missing somebody, unless somebody's injured, I got them beating. I got Del Norte Nighthawks beating the Rancho Bernardo Broncos. 21-14 for the championship. 24-14 for the championship. Division 1. Okay, now we're starting to get to the big boys. 1 through 4. We got Torrey Pines leading off at number 1. Mission Hills 2, El Camino 3, La Costa Canyon 4. This is tough. Top four teams are really top-heavy out of this bracket. Cathedral being at 6 is kind of crazy. I don't think that they're going to have... No. Cathedral can make a run for it. They got Ramona. They'll beat Ramona. They'll play an El Camino team. They could beat El Camino. They got to face Mission Hills. I think Mission Hills can beat Cathedral. But that can go either way, honestly. This is interesting. I got Torrey Pines going all the way just because they're a solid team. I want to say that La Costa Canyon would be able to make a run and go all the way. But I think Saints has a chance to beat La Costa Canyon. And I think Torrey Pines is just the best overall team. La Costa Canyon has the best offense probably in all of Division One, But defensively, who knows if they could stop something. Torrey Pines has a tough offense to stop, and they have a, a stout defense. Torrey Pines going all the way, I believe. I have them playing Mission Hills. I got Mission Hills beating Torrey Pines 28-14. I got Mission Hills winning D1. Open division. This is where it gets real, son. Starting out, let's go 1-4. And then I'm going to get into my analysis because I want to talk about this. Okay, we got undefeated Lincoln going up against the 9-1 and one, number 4 seed Helix Highlanders. High, higher seed gets the home field advantage. I got Lincoln winning 35-7. to seven. Let me get into my analysis. Lincoln is on a hot streak. They haven't lost a game since 2009. Okay. They have one of the best quarterbacks in the county. They have the best. They have the fastest players in the county. And they have dudes. Here's the thing. I don't know if Helix has a bunch of college-bound players like they did last year. Like the PV defensive linemen. All these corners that were just going both ways that are Division One talents. I don't know if they have that this year. But what I could tell you is that collectively, cohesively as a team, Lincoln has the most aggressive and the most hungry players. And that itself can take care of a lot of teams just by winning the fear factor of it all. Lincoln's going to go and smash Helix in the mouth. And I made that video before about Helix not being able to step up to the occasion and win big games. It's going to be the same story, different chapter. Helix is going to go in there and get whooped. And they're going to give the smallest guy on the team about 50 carries. And he's going to get you 143 tough yards. And he's going to leave there with his limbs hanging off. Because they can't do anything else because they had a great quarterback that can't make plays. And they got all these receivers that are prima donnas, except number zero. Number zero is a dog. He's a sophomore. You need to throw that, bo- that, that kid the ball more. Number zero. I don't know his name on Helix. He's a dude. But they got uh, some big softies up there. Number six, big softie. Number four, big softie. And those guys are big D1 div- body guys. Just they don't have no fight in them, bro. I like Helix's linebackers, but those guys need to start eating, and they're not eating. Lincoln's linebackers, those dudes are eating week in and week out. Helix, to me, is soft. They have a soft culture. They're going to get in there and be able to make plays because they're coached so well and that they've played a lot of football, but they don't have that edge. They don't have a chip on their shoulder. I don't know why. They should because they haven't won anything in a long time, and their goal every year should be to get to this point. They're here now. They have an opportunity. They missed out and squandered on the opportunity losing to Granite Hills by however much points, that one point double overtime. That could have been huge to be able to play Carlsbad, which would have been a more formidable opponent for Helix, but they didn't, so they squandered it. Lincoln, 35-7 over Helix. 
Okay, Granite Hills Carlsbad is an interesting game. I'm going to be there. November 9th, I believe. It's going to be the day before Lincoln and Helix. <sighs> this game could go either way. I have bias towards Granite Hills. Just in that they're in a location where there's a ton of football and athletic incompetence in this area of San Diego. So therefore, a team doing, doing this well in an area that's so bad gives people out here hope and something to cheer about because they're doing so well coming off a state championship victory. Granite Hills is going to do well. They're going to play hard. I just believe that their Achilles Hill is just the young quarterback, the freshman, just being inexperienced. That's not a knock against him and his ability. That's just the fact of the matter that you're going to be putting in a situation where stakes are high. Coaches have t- more time to be able to prepare, having this as additional bye week essentially to be able to prepare for a game. And all they have to do is just prepare for one game at a time. They don't have to worry about league. They don't have to worry about a stretch of games. It's just one opponent at a time, and you get all the film, and everything is just really shrunk in into a, into a, in a, in a, in a mini telescope microscope to be able to assess the detail of the opponents and to be able to really hone in on what they do and what they don't do. So... That being said, Carlsbad, I believe, is going to expose that out of him. Maxwell Turner and all these boys are going to still do their thing. But I got Carlsbad just winning at home. Got the best quarterback on the field, obviously, in the in the county, in the state, poss- potentially. 28 to 17, I have them winning Carlsbad. But again... My thing is that Granite Hills has a better chance of beating Carlsbad than than Helix has a chance to beat Lincoln. It's just a lot closer of a margin in, in the Carlsbad game. So those are the winners. So that means the final. Carlsbad, Lincoln, the rematch. I said a long time ago before the season started, way back then, that Carlsbad was going to avenge the loss last year and beat Lincoln. Just because I don't like switching up, I'm going to keep that prediction because I believe Carlsbad can coach really well and they'll be able to really expose matchups and call a good game against Lincoln. They're familiar with each other. They have each other's tape. It's just a matter of coaching. I think that Carlsbad has a lot of confidence and a lot of experience coming back. If anything, if there's any edge that Carlsbad has, because obviously players at Lincoln are better for the most part than the players at Carlsbad, it's that the inexperience of playing at a big stage might get Lincoln. But what will combat that is Lincoln's players' swagger and confidence. Those kids don't care. They're going to go out there and play. It doesn't matter. So that kind of just nullifies that point. But it might be something. I am going to predict that Carlsbad will beat Lincoln 34 to 28, but realistically Lincoln will probably win that game in the championship over Carlsbad. So that's that's what I got. We'll see. This is exciting. Man. I'm gonna watch all these games. I'm gonna go to as many games as I can. It's a blessing to be able to have football. You know what I mean? It's the best sport in the world. And it gives everybody a chance to show what they can do again i say this every year i've been saying this since i had this cha- youtube channel for the past two three years all that training and all the passing league and all the summer workouts and all this extra winter stuff that these people are doing to be able to prepare for only 10 to 13 games out of the year matters now that you really think about man all that time i put in what 250 days to just get ready for like a hundred days of football. This is where it counts. So shout out to all the players out there. Good luck. Stay healthy. Do what you can. Play hard. Really prove something. You have your you're representing your family. You're representing you. You're representing your school. You're representing a lot of people in the community. Go out there, play hard. Don't don't go out there if you don't want to be out there. You know what I'm saying? That goes for anything, anybody. It's gonna be exciting. I got all the champs lined up. We'll see if my predictions are right, man. Check in for the next one, man. Peace.